Today we're going to look at what I think is a really nice way to derive or to build the derivative of the logarithm function. And this is like maybe a non-standard construction of this derivative. And I should point out that this comes from an exercise in Spivak's calculus book, which I think is the best calculus book out there. Okay, so let's start with the definition of the derivative for the log base b of x. So I'm going to write this as the limit as delta x approaches zero of the log base b of x plus delta x minus the log base b of x all over delta x. But now let's observe that I can do some stuff with logarithm rules to push the numerator together and then also bring this denominator into the exponent of the natural log. So let's do those all at once. So here we have the limit as delta x approaches zero of, now it's going to be the log base b of, so it's going to be x plus delta x divided by x because of the logarithm rule. So let's split that division up. So we'll have x over x, which is 1, plus delta x over x. And then by another logarithm rule, that's going to be raised to the 1 over delta x power. And then over here, let's just recall those logarithm rules real quickly. So we have the log base b, but I won't put that in here, of a minus the log of b is the log of a over b. And we also know that r times the log of a is the same thing as the log of a to the r. So that's what we used there. So now for this next step, what we're going to do is a change of variables for the limit. And the change of variables is going to be based off this thing that we see right here, which is delta x over x. So let's maybe set h equal to delta x over x. But now let's observe that that means that delta x is h times x. And of course, we see a delta x by itself up here in this exponent. We see a 1 over delta x. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. Now we'll have the limit as h goes to 0. Because of course, because of this substitution, if delta x is approaching 0, h is also approaching 0. And then we'll have the log base b of 1 plus... So let's see, it'll be an h now, and then this is all raised to the power of 1 over h times 1 over x. And I wrote it like that because now we're going to use a logarithm rule to bring this 1 over x out front. But that 1 over x cannot just stop here, it can actually be brought all the way outside of the limit. And that's because, well, the limit is with respect to h, and x is a constant. So let's bring that out. So we have 1 over x, and then we'll have the limit as h approaches 0 of the log base b of 1 plus h raised to the 1 over h. And now I'm going to do two things. I'm going to do another change of variables for our limit, and I'm also going to bring this limit inside of the logarithm. I can do that because the log is a continuous function. Okay, so in this case, what I'll do is I'll set n equal to, let's see, 1 over h. And now we want to think about n as a natural number. So that's turning this into a limit of a sequence instead of of a limit of a function. So that's going to leave us with 1 over x. And then, like I said, we're bringing that inside the logarithm. So we have the log base b of, let's see what this is going to turn into. We'll have the limit as n goes to infinity. And that's, well, that's because as h goes to 0, n is going to go, well, either to plus or minus infinity, depending on 
the side of zero that we're approaching. But that being said, let's just check the case when n is approaching positive infinity. You can also check maybe on your own the case when n is approaching negative infinity. And then we'll have one plus one over n raised to the n power. But then let's rewrite this a little bit. Let's rewrite this as one over x times the log base b of the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n. And this is where a sub n is equal to this one plus one over n raised to the n power. And now you might say, well, I know what that limit is, but let's maybe pretend that we don't know what that limit is and well, calculate it. But the standard way to calculate it would be to use L'Hopital's rule after taking a logarithm, but that uses the fact that we know the derivative of a logarithm, which at the moment we don't. So instead, let's show that this limit exists and then define that to be some number. And as you'll see, that'll be the number e. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do now. So let's show that, like I said, the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n exists. And so we're gonna do that with the monotone convergence theorem. So that means we need to show that this sequence is bounded. And we also need to show that this sequence is either increasing or decreasing. So in fact, what we'll do is show that it's bounded above, which means we need to show that it's increasing. Okay, so like I said, we need to show that it's bounded above first, so let's do that. So bounded above, so how can we do that? Well, let's start with this a sub n, and then maybe just for the sake of argument, let's observe that this a sub n is bigger than zero. I think that's pretty clear. But then that's gonna be equal to one plus one over n raised to the n power, now what I'll do is expand this as a binomial uh, series or do a binomial expansion. So that's going to be the sum as k goes from 0 up to n of the binomial coefficient n choose k and then we'll have 1 over n all raised to the k power. In other words, we'll have 1 over n to the k. Now I'm going to simultaneously do two steps here. So what I'll do is I'll take out the first two terms and then I'll rearrange that binomial coefficient using its definition. Okay, so let's rewrite this as two plus the sum as k goes from two up to n. And now before rewriting this, let's maybe put in the margin this binomial coefficient just to save ourselves a little bit of room here. So this can be rewritten as n times n minus one all the way down to n minus k plus one all over k factorial. So now let's take each term in the product here and put it uh, over one of these n's. We have k such n's in the numerator from this uh, descending product and we have k n's in the denominator. So that's gonna be, let's see, n over n, which is one, and then we'll have n minus one over n, which is one minus one over n. And then the next one will be one minus two over n, all the way down to one minus, let's see, that'll be k minus one over n. And then that's all multiplied by one over k factorial. Okay, so now in order to finish this argument to show that this is bounded, let's observe that each of these is less than one. So this term right here is less than one. This next term right here is less than one. This term right here is less than one. And well, all those terms in the middle are also less than one. And then maybe let's observe that there is a famous inequality that talks about bounding one over k factorial by some power of two, and this is one over two to the k minus one. So that's in fact less than one over two to the k minus one. I'll leave that as a bit of a homework exercise. So that makes this whole thing less than two plus the sum as k goes from two up to n 
of one over two to the k minus one. But now we're gonna push this inequality further by changing this upper bound from n to infinity. And since this converges, well, we can actually find the precise value of that. That's in fact a geometric series which has a standard formula. If you check, you can see that this geometric series sums up to the number one. So that leaves us with two plus one, which is three. So let's just observe what we have. We've shown that this is not just bounded above, but also bounded below. What we see is that a sub n is between zero and three. Now, let's also show that this thing is increasing. And so since it's bounded and it's increasing, well, then it will have a limit. Okay, so let's see how we can show that it's increasing. And in fact, we can use part of the calculation that we have right here. So let's take our a sub n and think about it as this expansion right here and observe that if I change all of these n's to n plus 1's, I create something larger. And that's because 1 over n is going to be bigger than 1 over n plus 1. So that means when I subtract it, well, the inequality changes in the other direction. Similarly, 2 over n is bigger than 2 over n plus 1, but subtraction will turn the inequality around. But that means that when I do that, change all of those n's to n plus 1's, and also add another term, which is the n plus first term, I have an inequality going in the following direction. So I have a sub n is less than 2 plus our sum from 2 up to n plus 1 of 1 minus 1 over n plus 1 all the way up to 1 minus k minus 1 over n plus 1 times one over k factorial. But of course, that's exactly a sub n plus one. So we've got our sequences bounded above and it's increasing, which means it converges. So now let's define the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n to be equal to We'll just define this to be equal to the number e. So we're defining the number e by that. Again, we know that this exists and we can define a number out of this by the monotone convergence theorem. So let's see what that leaves us with in the end. So we have the derivative of the log base b of x, so d by dx of log base b of x is in fact equal to 1 over x times the log base b of e. So let's rewrite that as the log base b of e over x. But of course, by the change of base formula for the logarithm, the log base b of e is 1 over the natural log of b. So we have this is 1 over x times the natural log of b. And that's the familiar formula that you probably have seen before. But I think this is a really nice way of getting at that formula. And that's a good place to stop.